Hey everybody, Brandon Boyd with The Brandon Boyd Show. Thank you so much for watching. It is good to be back with this week's edition of the Weekly Pointers News Update. Now this usually comes out every Sunday evening. However, if you are a subscriber to this channel, you know that this past weekend I was out of town staying in New Orleans at the Eliza Jane Hyatt property. A full review of that property will be forthcoming as well, so stay tuned for that. But I did promise as soon as I got back I would record the video for the news this past week. Before we get started, if you do find this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome and give me a big thumbs up on the video. Video. And if you are a fan of receiving the latest information on credit cards, points and miles, travel, money, finance, and everything in between delivered in a fun, fast-paced format, then watch as the subscribe button goes over to the Notification Bell's fraternity house to show him how to dance. If you're not familiar with the Weekly Pointers News Update, let me break it down because it's pretty simple, all right? Every Sunday evening, unless I'm traveling like this past weekend, I put out the Weekly Pointers News Update, and the goal is to catch you up on all the news you may have missed regarding the topics that I just mentioned a little bit earlier. And the format's pretty simple. On one side of the screen, you'll see a list of topics that I'm going to be covering. Each topic will be highlighted while I'm covering it, and there will be a timer down below to let you know how long I will be discussing each topic. You can also check the chapters down in the video description as well if you want to skip ahead, but why would you want to do that? You've already missed out on some of these stories, right? Why not catch up on all of it? With that said, I've been gone this past weekend. I missed you guys, and I'm ready to dig back into the news. Let's get going. As we get started with this first topic, we actually had a viewer ask about this, and I was going to put this in the Weekly Pointers News Update anyway, but let me go ahead and address this and address her question as well. This is from Shannon Thompson. She says, I hope you had a great trip. I did, by the way. It was a lot of fun. Hey, when you prepare the next weekly update, will you please touch on the new Companion Pass sign-up bonus on the Southwest cards? And she says she did get denied it in December at 824, and she did get a pre-selected letter in the mail. Should you try again? Well, it's a great question, and it's something that we do want to touch on because Southwest has introduced some new sign-up offers for those that are interested in Companion Pass for one year only. Let me explain how this works, okay? With the three personal Southwest credit cards, you have the option of earning Companion Pass that's good through February 28th of 2023. Now, that's one year from now, all right? And you also get 30,000 Southwest points on top of that if you meet the men's spends associated with each one of these cards. Let's break this down real quick. Let's say that you've got one of these Southwest personal cards and you were able to meet the men's spin in a month or two all right that puts you out till March or April all right you don't get the points until your statement closes which could put you out to April or May even and getting those points necessary for companion pass so what you're looking at here is potentially only getting companion pass from April or May of 2022 up until the end of February 2023 in my opinion, that's a pretty narrow window for Companion Pass, and you can certainly do that, okay? You can certainly go for that. What I would do is I would wait until the end of the year 2022 and do it the old-fashioned way and sign up for a Southwest personal card and a Southwest business card and use all of those points combined together to get your 125,000 points necessary in one calendar year to earn Companion Pass. So I would sign up for those cards at the end of the year, but not earn any of the points until the beginning of 2023 because, again, you want to earn those in the same calendar year. In my opinion, that's a better deal because you get Companion Pass for two years versus less than one year with the way that it's set up right now. Again, that's my personal opinion, and that's what I would do. But if you do have a lot of Southwest travel coming up between April or May of this year going into February of 2023, then it may be a really good fit. However, speaking more broadly, I think more people will benefit from earning companion pass the old fashioned way. Hey, Shannon, you asked, that's my honest opinion. I hope that helps out. Let me know what you think about this strategy down in the comments. Do you think I'm off base? Do you think this is a pretty good strategy? Are you gonna take advantage of this one year companion pass? Let me know down in the comments. Again, we have a lot of new people that are into points and miles right now. So any information that you can provide down there is very helpful to everyone. Again, just my two cents, but I would wait and do it their traditional way. Budget Friendly Airline Frontier is purchasing Budget Friendly Airline Spirit Airlines for $3 billion. If you watch this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of competition in the marketplace in order to drive down prices for consumers. So this is a pretty big hit to that in my opinion. However, according to the officials with Spirit and Frontier, I'm gonna read this just so I make sure I get it correct. They are saying, quote, together Frontier and Spirit expect to change the industry for the benefit of consumers, bringing more ultra low fares to more travelers and more destinations across the US. This is gonna be a wait and see approach because again, any time competition is eliminated in the marketplace, it usually doesn't work out well for the consumer, but they're promising to open up more fares and more destinations to more people across the US and in Latin America and more underserved areas. 
I'm interested to see how this plays out because again, I'm disappointed that another airline is being eliminated and especially in the low airfare category because we need as much competition as we can get to keep the airlines on us. Let me know what you think about this. Are you excited about the change? Are you not excited about it? I know how I feel, but let me know down in the comments. Hyatt Properties made a big move towards the end of 2021 where they announced their peak and off-peak pricing. Now they are making even more news as they have announced that some of our favorite properties in the Points and Miles community are going to be moving up a category and maybe out of range for some of the free night certificates that we're holding in our accounts right now. Let's break this down into practical terms and look at some real-world examples here. So they moved several really popular Category 7 properties up to Category 8, and you're aware that some of the free night certificates associated with Hyatt do give the free night certificates for category one through seven. So if you're thinking about that, if they move something to a category eight, you're no longer gonna be able to book that with your category one through seven free night certificate. Let's take a look at this list real quick because these are some of the category seven properties that are very popular right now that will be moving to category eight. So we've got the Park Hyatt in New York, We've actually got that booked right now, and I'll do a review of that later on. We've got the Ventana Big Sur property. We're staying there this year as well. The Alila Napa Valley, Park Hyatt Kyoto, Park Hyatt Sydney. A lot of different places here that are popular in the points and miles community. So these are going to be moving to Category 8. It's important to note, though, that you can still book under the current rates until March 22nd, 2022 at 8 a.m. Central Time. So if you want to book any of the properties that I just mentioned or that are listed up on the screen, make sure you do it before that time because that's when this category change is going to occur. Just to give an example, if you have a Category 7 property right now that's 30,000 points a night, moving it to a Category 8 property, you could be looking at 40,000 points per night. With the peak and off-peak pricing, that means that that Category 8 property can now be somewhere between 35 and 45,000 points. So you're potentially looking at a 15,000 point increase per night because of these category changes. Think about that, 15,000 points per night. You can actually book stays at lower level properties for 15,000 points per night just on the increase that we're gonna see in this category change. So it is a big deal, especially if you're booking a longer trip. Imagine if you're booking a week long trip and you add 15,000 additional points per night at a property that you were previously gonna be able to get for significantly less points. It's a little bit of a gut punch, all right? But if you wanna take advantage of this, make sure you do it before that March 22nd deadline, all right? It's really important to note that these category changes are not just for the higher end properties that are moving from a category seven to a category eight. This is also gonna impact those that are in category four that are gonna be moving to a category five. Now, what does that mean for you? It means that some of the free night certificates that you may have in your account right now for a category one through four property aren't gonna be as useful for the properties that I'm gonna mention because that's all going to change. Let's take a look at the properties on this list here that are in category four that are gonna be moving to category five and thus you won't be able to use that category one through four free night certificate. So ugh, not very fun. The Confidant in Miami Beach, the Hyatt Place Portland Old Port, Guild Hall, a Thompson Hotel, that's a great property. We've stayed there as well. And just looking at some of the other ones up here, the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress, that's a great property. We've stayed there. The Hyatt Place Las Vegas. Hyatt Place Moab is actually jumping two categories, all right? So if you want to stay there, I highly recommend getting in before that March 22nd deadline, all right? Because uh, that's not fun at all. Now, there were some improvements associated with this as well, and improvements meaning that there are properties that were higher level that are moving to a lower category now, but they're usually moving to a lower category because the properties aren't that exciting to begin with. So these aren't as fun by any means, but at least not all of them are moving upward. Some examples of the ones that are moving down are the Hyatt Regency Sydney, the Hyatt Centric Center City, Philadelphia. Try saying that five times fast. Hyatt Centric Center City, Philadelphia. Yikes. But there are some that are moving down, but again, it's because they're not really that exciting of a property to begin with. So these hit pretty hard for me, all right? I love redeeming the free night certificate. So if you have those category one through four or category one through seven certificates, you may wanna evaluate your travel over the next year and see if you can go ahead and book these before the deadline on March 22nd and make sure that you lock in the rates as of right now because it will change. Let me know what you think about this change down in the comments below. I've got some really exciting Australian news and a really bad Australian accent. I'm sorry to all my Australian viewers just in advance. I try really hard, all right? Australia has announced that they are opening up their borders to international travelers that have been vaccinated and must show proof of vaccination. Now, this will happen later on in February, so it's right around the corner. You may look at this news and say, well, it still sounds very restrictive, and that is the case when you're comparing it to other countries in Europe that are continuing to lift restrictions, and in some countries in Latin America where there haven't hardly been any restrictions at all. But 
but this is better than what was there before. So if you are planning a trip to Australia and you have been vaccinated, you will be able to travel to Australia. And they take this pretty serious because if you aren't aware in the tennis world, the number one ranked player in the world and probably one of the greatest of all time went to play in the Australian Open, showed up and got deported because he wasn't vaccinated, okay? That's a whole story for a whole other day, but it just goes to show that they will follow the rules. So don't try to skirt around it or anything like that. The only reason I'm bringing this news up is if you've had Australia in your sights and you've wanted to travel there for a long time, now may be the time to go ahead and book it. They're lifting some of the restrictions, they're allowing people in, and now is the time to go ahead and lock in those cheaper rates. So let me know what you think about this. Have you had Australia on your bucket list or just your travel list in general? I know I have. I'm gonna be eyeballing this a little bit to see how it goes. I'm also interested to see if they actually follow through with this and keep it open over the long term or if they put the restrictions back in place. We won't know until it happens, but let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you're a fan of the Weekly Pointers News Update, you know that I like to end the show on a good food deal, and this week is no exception, as Wendy's has announced that they are gonna give away a free medium order of fries with any purchase made through the app through February 27th. Now you can take advantage of this deal once a week up through February 27th. So if you do the math on that, that is this week that you're watching this video and next week as well. So make sure you take advantage of that free order of medium fries. Wendy's is always throwing something out there to give away free food. I don't know how they're still in business, but take advantage of these offers before they go out of business. I don't know how they can keep doing this, but they are. I love Wendy's. Let me know what you think about this deal down in the comments. So we have lots of news, right? We've got the Southwest Companion Pass news, Frontier buying Spirit Airlines, We've got Australia opening up its borders, the high devaluation, and probably most importantly, the free fries at Wendy's. But let me know what you think about the stories down in the comments below. Keep in mind that we have a lot of new people watching this channel to get information on points and miles as they start their journey. So any information that you can share down in the comments, especially if you've been in this space for a while, will help out everyone. And as I mentioned before, the Weekly Pointers News Update does come out every Sunday evening, unless I'm traveling. But I think that's why you watch this channel as well, because I actually live everything that I'm talking about. We're not talking about credit card points and miles theory here. We're actually talking about living it and the practical implications of everything that happens in the points and miles world, right? I try to give you real world examples of that and I hope you do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification for alerts. And when you click on the Brandon Boyd Show, click, 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 you're going to get the latest information on credit cards, points and miles, travel, money, french fries, and everything in between. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. We'll see you soon.